I know people are still joining us, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So T is already recording. Thank you, T. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today on wellness and our new norm strategies to thrive. We're super excited about today. Um, this topic kind of came to us through a survey we launched and mental health and physical well-being was on the top two for us. So we decided to reach out to our community and find some experts in this area. So we have a great panel for today. And then along with that today, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're excited that we have this topic aligned with a very important um, month of mental health awareness. So we're gonna jump right into it and uh, review the agenda so we can stay on task. All right, so um, we'll do some brief remarks about a need to be South Florida, just so everyone's a little bit familiar with us. And then we'll introduce the speakers for today. And then we'll jump right into the webinar where the presenters will talk on their various topics. And then we'll have some closing remarks and finish up with some Q&A. So just to go over the logistics, um, this is a webinar format. So as you'll see, you can only see the presenters and the host, and then everyone else will be able to use the chat feature at the bottom and the Q&A feature at the bottom. So as we go through the presentation, if you have a question for one of the presenters, go ahead and drop it in the Q&A. And at the end, when we wrap up, I'll go ahead and facilitate the Q&A to kind of keep us on track. And if need be, we'll open the mics also for all of you to ask some additional questions. So that's the logistics. Again, I mentioned um, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're super excited that we're hosting this event. And we're gonna jump right in and start with introducing myself. My name is Katie Gittleman. I am one of the co-leaders for the South Florida community that we just launched early in March. So we're super excited. I work at Nova Southeastern University and along, me, along with me here is Ruth, who is also the co-lead. She works at Ultimate Software in Weston, Florida. So we're super excited to host our second webinar and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right over to Ruth so she can start um, introducing our presenters. Yes, thank you, Katie. Uh, we are super excited to have you here today to uh, uh, witness right, a great content and, and, and to discuss different strategies to take care of ourselves in different, in different areas. So I'll um, start introducing uh, our panel. So it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters. Uh, Marcela Tor is a general manager for Active Wellness in Plantation, Florida. She's also the program director, head coach for Friends in Training. You probably recognize Marcela if you have worked at Motorola or Magic Leap, or maybe if you have seen her while you were attending a Mercedes-Benz corporate run. She's very active in those, so you know. Um, and today, Marcela will be speaking about the wellness wheel and physical fitness. Thank you for being here. Next, we will have Jessica Fitzgerald. Uh, she's a registered dietitian for Care ATC and a contractor and ex era health well being. She will be covering the nutrition section of our discussion and she has prepared an amazing list of tips. Jessica will be your guide on how to eat well during this pandemic, how to prepare to shop at the supermarket and what to choose when snacking smartly at home. Thank you, Jessica, for being here. Let me introduce you to Dr. Maribel de Rios Roberts. She's an associate professor within the Department of Human Services at the College of Education at Nova Southeastern University uh, and also a licensed psychologist. She will be speaking about mental health and will be sharing tips and strategies to help you take care of yourself. Thank you, Maribel. And last but not least, we have Beth Raman. She is a program coordinator with Community Health at Baptist Health South Florida. She has over 30 years of experience using various ex experiential modalities to engage and educate the public in living a healthy and stress-reduced life. She will cover the mindfulness section and she has a surprise for all of us at the end of our presentation. Trust me, you feel relaxed at the end of this session. Thank you, Ben. So uh, with no further ado, uh, Marcella, please take it away. Thank you so much. Well, my name is Marcella, as Ruth mentioned, and I was born in Bogota, Colombia. I have a Bachelor of Science in Business Management, and I'm also an RRCA certified coach. I'm an avid runner, runner, marathon runner, 75 marathons completed. I have also completed the world majors and I have over 20 years of experience in health and in the health and fitness industry. I'm also a group exercise instructor. Spinning is my favorite. <laughs> and I'm passionate about making a positive impact in our community through health and wellness education and physical activity. Today, we're gonna to talk about two very important topics. 
individual wellness and the wellness wheel, and physical activity. The why, what, when, and how. So, let's get started with the wellness wheel. Overall wellness involves different dimensions that require awareness and attention, especially during this time of COVID-19. The first one we're going to talk about today is the intellectual wellness, which refers to the academic knowledge, creativity, and career development. It's all about learning, all about staying on top of our game and industry changes. Um, how much are we learning? Are we reading books? Are we listening to podcasts or taking online classes? Emotional wellness is being in tune with our thoughts and feelings. This pandemic has brought up a variety of emotions to us, uh, sometimes sadness, anxiety, and um, it's okay to recognize them and to talk about it. We can connect about it with family and friends. And then spiritual wellness includes our core beliefs and values and what we stand for. This is a great time for prayer and meditation. Financial wellness involves the process of how successfully finance, uh, manage our finances. I personally took nine weeks during this pandemic to enroll in a class called Financial Peace University. It was great. I really enjoyed it. I uh, improved my personal budgeting skills and also um, it talked about retiring and planning for that, which is so important. Environmental wellness involves learning about our surroundings. If you look around and you're working at home, maybe you can identify some projects that you can work on. Social wellness refers to the relationships we have with our family and with others in general. How are those family dynamics relationships? And finally, physical wellness, which promotes proper care of our bodies for ultimate health and functioning. It encourages the balance between physical activity, nutrition, and mental well-being for a body in top condition. So why do we wanna practice physical activity? Well, scientific research shows the positive impact exercise can have on us and our bodies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to please take a second, close your eyes, and I want you to picture yourself 20 years from now. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself older, weaker, maybe in need of help? Or do you see yourself strong, active, and independent? Well, what you do today can make a big impact on your future. Our bodies are our vehicles. We need to maintain them well and physical activity is key. A big part of physical activity and the maintenance of our bodies is, it doesn't matter today where you are sedentary or, or if you are actively active. Physical activity can meet you right where you are. So if you are um, sedentary or you are already active, it doesn't matter, it will help you. It will make you stronger and it'll make you a better individual. There are four main physical, mental, emotional, and social um, health benefits. So for example, physical. Exercise can help you reduce high blood pressure, reduce high cholesterol, reduce any other illnesses, and also obesity but it can also help you to build your immune system, which is so important during these days. It will give you energy. It will also help you keep your bones and muscles strong. So great, great variety of benefits in the physical aspect. Also, mentally, did you know that depression and suicide rates are also on the rise? And especially these last few weeks with the social distancing, Physical activity can help you reduce anxiety, depression, and worry. It also increases your cognitive function and mental alertness. It helps you sleep better and relax. Now let's talk about emotional health. When you exercise, your body releases endorphins, which are chemicals that trigger positive feelings in the body. You will feel happier. It, it helps us, your mood. It gives you confidence, improves your self-esteem, increases 
feeling of success and lowers sadness, tension, and anger. Now, social health. Exercise is great for social integration, even if it's virtually. How many of you have seen families riding bikes, um, going to parks? I think that's a beautiful thing and it's positive now during these days of COVID-19. So physical fitness, let's talk about why it's so important. Now, did you know that obesity rates in the US have increased by 166% in the last 30 years? That is huge. We went from 11.6% to 30.9%. So it is time to get physical. Healthy is an outfit that looks different for everybody. Components of physical fitness. We're gonna talk about five today. Cardiorespiratory endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, flexibility, and body composition. How do we achieve all this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to incorporate physical activity to our daily lives. How do we want to do this? We want, for example, to start making it a habit to take the stairs instead of the elevator. We want to maybe park our cars farther away at the grocery store. We want to perhaps mow our lawn or walk the door more often. And um, any kind of opportunity that you have to become more active on a daily basis will be key. But in addition to that, we also need to add 30 to 60 minutes daily, five to seven times a week of aerobic exercise. It could be jogging, it could be cycling, it could be swimming, playing tennis, dancing. The beauty of exercise is that there are so many modalities. So pick something you enjoy and you have fun with and go for it. We also need to include two to three times um, strength and flexibility. How can you achieve that? For example, you can do Pilates or you can yoga, uh, join a yoga class or Tai Chi or lifting weights, very important. And we definitely wanna cut down on time that is inactive, for example, watching TV. Downtime is important, don't get me wrong. It's good to have downtime, but sometimes we're sitting too long we need to, if you're sitting too long, especially now that you're working from home, every 30 minutes, get up and take a little break and walk and, and just stay active. Thank you. All right, so making time to become a healthier you. Research shows that the number one barrier for um, exercise is time. Everybody talks about time constraints. Well, how many of you know that if you really want to do something, you will find a way, and if you don't, you'll find an excuse. So you need to make it a priority in your life, and you need to make a plan and put it on your calendar. You have to set up a meeting with yourself. You know how we have our weekly meetings with our staff or our managers? We need to have that meeting on the calendar and give ourselves priority. If we don't do it, nobody else is gonna do it for us. We need to find extra hours in the day. How do we do that? Perhaps you can get up a little earlier or um, you can manage your time during the day a little better so that, for example, you, in, you decrease your screen time and add extra minutes to budget for exercise. Include family if possible. Again, as we've seen in these times of COVID-19, getting in the great outdoors, following the proper protocol, but implementing your family, go to a park, play sports, keep them active. And you need to find an accountability partner. This is key. You can also keep others accountable and set up SMART goals. How many of you are familiar with the SMART goals? We'll talk to, about them a little bit. And SMART goals are specific, meaning that your goals need to be clear and well-defined. They also need to be measurable. You will need to be able to track your daily progress. Achievable, list the specific tasks you will, that you will need to complete. Relevant, does this goal help add to your plans for the future? Think about yourself in 20 years and make it happen. And they have to be town bound as well. You wanna set up a time when you want to finish those goals so you can measure that progress. 
And now let's bring it all together and let's make it happen. For example, if our goal is going to be increasing physical activity daily, select an activity you like to try. Is it running or walking or cycling or dancing? Design your plan. When are you gonna do this? On where? How many times a week? Put it on your calendar. Who are you going with, with if anyone? Accountability partners. Is this an achievable and realistic goal? And when are you starting? Get to it. So the strategies to thrive, action items for you. This I'm going to leave you with. And what I would like for you to do is to review the, the seven dimensions of the wellness wheel and identify one thing you can do for each during this time. Make it happen with smart goals. I'm going to give you a couple of tips. For example, if you want to achieve more physical activity, you can actually kill two birds with one stone. If you set up yourself to go for a 30 minute walk or a 60 minute walk, you can listen to a podcast or you can listen to an audiobook, and then you can tackle also your intellectual wellness and stay relevant. Pick up to a topic that is benefit for your career development and you can do both. Or you could also meditate or pray while you're walking. Try to use your time strategically. Now, we can also increase the physical activity. And my challenge to you is going to be sign up for a virtual 5K and start a training plan. We have some resources I'm providing to you in the next slide. But what you, what you need to do, if you are new to the running or walking, the first thing you wanna do is go to a running store and pick up the, a good set of shoes that is going to be good for you. It's not about the color, about the brand. Everybody's a little bit different, so you need to be fitted. So do that and then follow your training plan. And remember, five to seven days to, of 30 to 60 minutes of cardiovascular exercise. Now, if you are already active, there is also so many things that you can do to continue to get healthier and stronger. For example, two to three times a week of strengthening and flexibility is super important. And I would like to leave you with this word of encouragement. Be grateful for all your blessings. Increase more physical activity in your life and become a healthier and stronger you. You can do it. We believe in you. These are some resources. And with this, I would like to welcome our nutritionist, Jessica. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jessica. I'm the registered dietitian. Uh, I was born in Miami, and I currently work at Nextera Energy as their in-house dietitian. And I've been in the industry for about 15 years. Um, I, too, have run a couple marathons, not as many as Marcella, but I did do a few, and I think that's pretty good. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, eating well during COVID-19 and just eating well in general. I'm a big believer in that you are what you eat. Um, when you eat well and fuel your body properly, you're going to feel better both mentally and physically. Now more than ever, it's so important to fuel ourselves with the best nutrition possible so we keep our immune system strong and healthy. Eating well can sometimes feel like uh, it's difficult or it's a chore, but it really doesn't have to be. It just takes a little bit of time and some planning and in the long run, it's gonna save you a lot of stress. So I'm here today to offer you some tips and strategies to make the nutrition aspect of staying healthy a little bit easier for you. Um, so we're gonna go through some meal planning, grocery store shopping, talk about some snacking, um, and some immune boosting foods. So I like to meal plan and meal prep. Um, eating well and staying healthy starts with a little bit of planning, just like Marcella talked about planning with exercise, same goes for nutrition. So I like to plan what I'm going to eat around my schedule. So think about your week ahead for the next week. What days are you busy with meetings and appointments? Um, what days are you not so busy? So perhaps the days you're busiest will be a takeout night or a leftover night. And the other days you can leave for cooking. Um, I like to do some cooking on the weekends. I take two hours on a Sunday and I can make a couple meals. It saves me time, it saves me a lot of stress, and it takes some chores off my plate during the week when things are hectic. 
Um, so I try to do a couple meals on the weekend. I, and I try to make the most of my cooking time. So I'll cook, I'll make two meals out of one. So if I make spaghetti sauce, I'll make spaghetti sauce for one night and I'll save some sauce for a lasagna for the next night. I'll double up my recipes, even triple up my recipes. That way I can freeze some um, and save some for a later date. I also like to do a plant-based meal once a week if possible. I know we've all heard about meat, uh, meat shortages during this pandemic. So why not try out a meatless meal for a night once a week? It's actually healthier and it can be cheaper as well. Uh, so now that we have our plan for the week, we're going to go to the grocery store. Um, so often these days, going to the grocery store can feel like we're suiting up to go to battle. We have to wear a mask and keep a distance. So you want to grab your mask, keep a safe distance, and go into the store prepared with your grocery list. I like to make my list on paper now. I used to do it on my phone, but the less you're taking your phone out of the store, the better, because phones get dirty. Um, this way you can just keep your paper list, use it at the store and toss it on your way out. I also like to make my list according to the layout of my grocery store. That way I'm not running around the store back and forth. Um, I'm spending less time in the store. So, this way I'll know I have my produce section is the first section of my grocery store. That's gonna be my first on my list is my produce. Um, so the less time we stay at the store, the, you know, the safer you are. Also, when you get home, you don't have to be disinfecting all of your grocery bags and everything. Just wash your fruits and vegetables as you normally would. Um, stick to your list. Try not to, uh, if you see a buy one, get one, you don't need to buy it. However, if it's something healthy like produce, go ahead and get it. If it's the Milano cookies that always seem to be buy one, get one, put it back. You don't need it. I try to buy what I need for a week, if I can, two weeks. So I'm spending less time going to the grocery store. That's not always possible. Um, but I do try to buy what I need for the week. When it comes to produce, I'm hearing people say either their store is out of certain things or they buy too much produce and then it goes bad. Uh, your produce, if it looks like it's going bad, fruits and vegetables, cut them up and freeze them. You can use the fruits for smoothies. You can use cut up vegetables for soups or stews later on. Um, frozen, I always hear, should I get fresh? Should I get frozen or canned? Honestly, Fresh and frozen, frozen is just as good. Uh, produce is frozen at its peak, so it's just as good as fresh. Canned is all, um, not your best option, but don't be afraid to get canned fruits and vegetables. Any fruits and vegetables is better than no fruits and vegetables. If you get canned, just rinse them. Um, if you're getting canned fruits, make sure you choose the ones in water or juice, not the heavy syrup. So. You want to spend the most time getting your produce. Another big issue that I'm hearing when uh, for people now that they're working at home is the snacking. So when what are we snacking on? We're so close to our kitchens now. If we're working from home, it's easy to just get up, run to the kitchen, aimlessly looking around for something. What are we snacking on? If you grab a soda and a bag of chips, that's almost 500 calories and 65 grams of sugar. If you're out and about and you go through the drive through at Starbucks and get a Frappuccino, later on that day, you might snack on two little Oreo cookies. 560 calories and almost 80 grams of sugar. And did we really get full from those snacks? Were they satisfying? Were they beneficial for us? Probably not. And you also ate about a third to a half a day's worth of calories. So if you find you're too snacking too much or on the wrong things, take a moment before you start rummaging in the kitchen to assess why are you going to eat? Why are you hungry? I like to ask myself, will I eat this apple? If the answer is yes, then I'm probably hungry. If the answer is no and I'm just looking for some chips and cookies, then maybe I'm not really hungry and I just feel like snacking. Am I anxious? 
Am I bored? Am I snacking just because it's there? So what should we snack on? Snacking is a good thing, but you want to watch how much you're snacking on and watch how frequently. So I've prepared a list of um, some immune boosting snack ideas for you. I like to have a rule of thumb that every meal and snack I eat has to have a piece of produce in it. And that way it makes it a little bit healthier and it's more filling, it's got some fiber. I love doing veggies and hummus, specifically cut up bell peppers. Those are high in vitamin A and they're very good for you. So I'll do cut up veggies with some hummus. You could do low fat yogurt with some walnuts and berries. Um, berries have lots of antioxidants. You could do fruits like oranges and kiwis and papaya. You could make a smoothie with some leafy greens and yogurt and fruits. Uh, I'll do a homemade trail mix, and I like to do homemade trail mix because oftentimes the trail mix you buy in the store can be quite caloric. Um, so I'll make homemade trail mix with whole grain cereals, nuts, and some dried apricots. Um, I try to avoid the ones at the store with all the chocolate in it. So those can add up. Sometimes you just feel like munching and you're anxious or you're bored and you just want a snack. So in those times, I'll have some popped air pop popcorn or some edamame. And that makes me feel like I'm snacking on something. And at least it's, it's not bad. It's good. I'll do whole grain crackers with avocado or some hummus on it as well. It has that crunch. Ideally, you want your snacks to be some healthy fruits and vegetables, some healthy carbs, and some protein to help keep you full. So that good crunch and combination going. So, but be mindful of your portion sizes. I like to measure things out, especially things like nuts and cheese that are calorically dense, and those things can easily add up. So you do wanna be mindful of your portions. So staying on track, I like to keep a food log. I specifically keep my fitness pal. It really shows me what I'm taking in. It keeps me accountable. Um, it's eye-opening to see how much you're eating. Um, and it helps me keep track of my portion sizes as well. There's lots of apps out there that you can use for staying on track. Um, or you can just keep, you know, write it on paper if you like that old school way as well. Keep regular meal times. Just because we're at home doesn't mean it's a free-for-all to eat all the time. Uh, set your calendar. If you feel like you're skipping meals or if you feel like you're getting up and eating too much, set your calendar for meal breaks and snack breaks. You could even pre-pack your lunch and snacks just like if you were going to the office and keep those in your fridge and that way you have your snacks and meals allotted for the day. I will close up my kitchen around 8 or 9 p.m. at night and that way it keeps us from going in there and looking for more food. Keep your kitchen closed. Set open hours for your kitchen, only at certain times for the day. That way my kids aren't going in there and eating all the food either. So, you know, you want to try to include all these immune boosting foods in your day if you can. Try every meal that you have, every snack that you have, try to include some healthy immune boosting foods. Nothing is off limits. You need to let yourself indulge now and then, but make sure you're only indulging in what you love. Like I said in the beginning, you are what you eat, and nutrition plays an important role in keeping your immune system strong and ready to fight. So fill yourself up with these immune-boosting foods every day, add them to your meals and snacks, and keep yourself healthy and happy. And I've also provided these um, handouts for you, uh, eating well during COVID-19. It has a list of vitamins and all the immune boosting foods that you can try to incorporate. And also there's a resource for um, food safety and grocery shopping. And next up we have Maribel, who is going to talk about um, mental health. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Um, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about mental health and I am a native Floridian. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist and obtained my doctoral degree in psychology. 
um, and I've been teaching at Nova Southeastern University now in the Fisher College of Education and School of uh, Criminal Justice for over 12 years. Um, and I work a lot with children and families, um, particularly in regards to helping them structure and adjust to changes in their life. So I want to talk to you a little bit about work-life balance during this point in time. So we've been facing a lot of challenges and changes uh, as a result of the pandemic. Um, we've had to adjust to learn to work from home. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to provide you with some tips on helping to manage that. Um, also, how to try to avoid burnout, um, how to cope uh, with some strategies to cope with uh, some of the stress that you might be experiencing and how to take care of yourself. So when we talk about this idea, and this is a common term that's often put out there, um, you know, in uh, self-help, uh, the self-help literature, or just out, you know, in the common uh, common place, is this idea of balance, right? And everyone's trying to strive for balance. But really, you know, is optimal balance really achievable? Um, that really depends on who you ask. Uh, but ultimately, balance really looks differently for many different people. Um, and it's not necessarily, when we talk about the concept of balance, we're not necessarily referring to being able to allot the exact equal amount of time to the important activities in your life every day. Um, it's more about fluidity and it's about flexibility and being able to prioritize on a regular basis, what are the things that I wanna focus my attention on for the day and making choices for that day that are going to provide me with a sense of fulfillment and enjoyment and that those choices might fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis. So some tips for working from home. So just like, you know, I know I'm one who's had to um, adjust to the process of working completely remotely. Um, and it does take some adjustments. Some of you may have figured out a system at this point, or you may now be transitioning back into the office and still trying to find a rhythm or maybe partly doing a little bit of both. But it is important to have a schedule. And Marcella and Jessica both talked about the importance of scheduling when it comes to fitness and nutrition. And it also is important when it comes to trying to uh, maintain your emotional wellness as well. So it's important to create structure um, and maybe set some working hours for yourself as you normally would if you were going into the office. Say I plan to work from 9 to 5 p.m., but allowing yourself some flexibility in the interim if things need to change. So for example, sometimes I know that um, my kids have been finishing up their schooling. And sometimes I say, okay, I try to schedule early on in the day and a block of time, maybe from 8 a.m. to about 9.30 to work on my uh, professional tasks and things I need to do. And then I might break it up a little bit and block schedule and say, I'm going to dedicate some time now to help my kids get their schooling done. And maybe particularly, you know, that I might transition around lunchtime and then give them a break. So it's staggering those work times so that we can try to balance and meet the needs of everyone in our unit is really important to try to obtain that sense of balance or that sense of wellness where we're not feeling overwhelmed. Um, and, you know, it's also important to schedule downtime. So just like it's important to write down and schedule and plan ahead for nutrition and fitness times, time for us to unwind, to think about an activity that we enjoy, whether it's just sitting on your bed and reading a book and allotting time for that, or whether it's taking a longer bath than you normally would, or going for a walk in the neighborhood, whatever it is that pe brings you peace and relaxation um, and enjoyment, it's important that we try to schedule time for ourselves because sometimes we become so overwhelmed with the demands of our day-to-day -day lives and managing our work uh, responsibilities and our home responsibilities that we forget we neglect to take care of ourselves um, and trying to stick to certain bedtime so we try to rise and go to sleep around the same time so that our bodies follow a certain circadian rhythm um, the same way we would want to do if we have young children in the home 
Um, and it is important to get buy-in from our family members and the people that are in our lives um, and discuss your work schedule with other people. I know, for example, my husband has been a huge help for me um, when I have a meeting at 10 o'clock and maybe one of my kids has a Zoom meeting with their class or has something that needs to be turned in immediately. So we tag team and I might you know, then start earlier, then he'll jump in, take over those responsibilities, and then I'll jump back into it. Um, and so really having that flow of who's going to, who's going to make dinner tonight, because, you know, I'm caught up with a late evening meeting, or who's going to um, maybe take the kids out for a walk. These are all things to discuss with uh, whoever's in your life. Um, creating a mor morning routine um, is really important too. Sometimes we just need to create that mental shift. So thinking about, okay, I'm getting out of bed and I'm transitioning into starting my day. I'm going to try to wake up around the same time. I'm going to try to get out of my pajamas. That really does help a lot, believe me. Um, and trying to start your day and your breakfast um, around a regular time every day. And then um, dedicating a specific workspace, again, related to that mental shift of I'm beginning my day and starting to be productive, I go into a space where I can be productive and focus all of my attention. Sometimes working in our bedrooms, particularly sitting on our beds, affects our productivity and our attention because our mind is programmed and our brain thinks, well, this is where we sleep and relax. So it becomes much more difficult to be able to sustain our attention and be productive. And then just planning your day, these SMART goals. Marcella has mentioned them and Jessica alluded to them. Um, you know, SMART goals are really important in planning out your task list and your to-do list for the day. And what are a few things that I want to accomplish throughout the day? And don't set overly ambitious goals and say, I want to tackle 10 of these because you might set yourself up to feel like you failed at them. So maybe select the most important three to five and try to get through those. So um, those tips are to help you avoid something we call burnout, right? And we've all at some point experienced um, some sense of burnout or feeling overwhelmed. So mentally preparing ourselves for each day is really important and knowing what we're going, anticipating what to expect throughout the day is gonna help prevent that. So making time to explore your own interests, whether it's maybe learning a new skill or maybe just setting aside time aside to maybe exercise it's something you've wanted to do more um, and you haven't had a time to do but prior prioritizing our own self-care is going to be very important and thinking about what are the things that i can control so when the world is chaotic and it's a crazy place what can I control? I can control how much news and media intake I'm consuming, whether it's through social media or it's through the actual news on TV and setting aside times to catch up with those um, and, and structured times, but not consistently overwhelming ourselves with that kind of information. How much I wash my hands and how much how many precautions I take. Um, those are things that you can control. Um, how much I'm thinking of myself versus everyone else. Sometimes we're so focused on meeting everybody else's needs and demands, whether it's our boss, the, the important people in our life, our elderly parents, our children, and we forget that we need some downtime and we need some self-care as well. Um, and remembering to breathe and to not make decisions, um, you know, to make the best informed decisions that you can for you and your family and that you're doing your best, the very best that you can. Some ways to cope, and you know, when we talk about coping, positive coping is really important. And this idea of gratitude. And rather than focusing on everything that's going wrong and all the challenges that we're facing, thinking about what we are grateful for and what we can control and what we're thankful for. So maybe thinking about something such as like, I'm grateful that my family's healthy right now, or I'm grateful for my friends who are supporting me. Um, so really the best way to manifest that gratitude is by acknowledging the people that are around you. 
and also trying to pay it forward, right, and helping others. So asking friends or neighbors or elderly family members if they need help, you know, and you can think about the positive and say, hey, you know, I'm healthy. I can go to the grocery store. I can go pick up prescriptions at the pharmacy if I need to. I can cook dinner for my family and for you as well if you need me to. So by focusing on those positive things that you can do and that you can do to help others, that's going to help you with your, your positive, shifting into that positive mindset. And ultimately, it all boils down to self-care and thinking about making time. What are the areas? What do I need to do to feel whole and to, to uh, obtain that sense of emotional wellness? And self-care can be comprised of a lot of different things. It can be acceptance of ourselves and being gentle with ourselves, uh, not being too critical about what we have been, been able to accomplish or get done. Or, you know, it's maybe our physical fitness and our physical condition and making that time to exercise or our nutrition, the things, the way that we're consuming, the choices that we're making on a regular basis. It's also thinking about how we can support others and support ourselves, how we can become more involved in the community, how we can explore our interests and curiosities and refocus our priorities and pay attention to those things that really matter. And ultimately, it's about slowing down and taking the time to focus a little bit on yourself and what fills your bucket. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and transition to Beth, who's going to take us um, through a wonderful uh, mindful, mindfulness practice. Thank you, Maribel, and the rest of our panelists. Everyone did such a great job. I've learned so much so far today, and I hope that all of you have also gathered new information for yourself. My name is Beth Ruman. I am a certified therapeutic recreation specialist, fancy term for what's, uh, I'm a recreation therapist, had been working in the field for many, many years, and my background has been in mental health and addiction. So today, what we're going to look at is mindfulness, meditation, and also get to have a little fun, I guess you could say, and a practice so that you can actually experience it for yourself. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is one of those things that we hear an awful lot today. I, I, I think it's probably one of the most popular words that we're hearing. Um, even prior to COVID-19, we were hearing about mindfulness and it's being used in all different ways, shape and forms. And I found this quote that I thought is just beautiful and it's a perfect example of what mindfulness is. And it just goes, it, it's not concerned with emptying your mind of thoughts or achieving any particular state but with awareness of your current state and how you deal with it. Are you aware, gentle, and open? And really what we're looking at with mindfulness is some very basic, simple techniques. It is not clearing your mind. I think a lot of times we think of mindfulness and we think of meditation as getting silent, getting quiet, getting the whole mind to lose all your thoughts. And that's not the way it is. So on the next slide, what we'll see are some very specific to mindfulness. They're simple, but they're hard to accomplish. And so a lot of times people will say to me, oh, it's a piece of cake. It isn't. But with more practice, and it's like learning to ride a bike, the more you practice, the better you get at it. So I encourage everyone to um, give it a try. The first most important thing about mindfulness is we stay in the present. We stay in the here and now. Instead of talking about looking at something in the past and I, I know I myself included in this, we tend to focus on the past or we're focused on the future. We're always looking towards what are we going to do next? What's the next thing? And we're losing sight of what's going on around us and how do our bodies feel? How do our minds feel? How do our souls and our hearts feel? And that's what mindfulness allows us to do is to get in touch with that by staying with the present. I am a worry word, full, downright, I fully admit that. The problem with that is, is it makes it very difficult for me. So my, med, my mindfulness practice really is important because then I stop worrying and I just say, okay, what can I do about it today? And then I do it and, or I think about it and I feel it. So for me personally, mindfulness has become such an important piece of my everyday life. It also says to us, you're not allowed to make any judgments. We develop 
this awareness to just calmly, and that's a real key, calmly accept any feelings, any thoughts, any behaviors, the environment, and not let it get to us and not beat ourselves up. I heard that um, when Maribel was talking about that self-care, that gentleness that we have to take for ourselves, taking good care of ourselves, making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and what's best for us is part of mindfulness. Also, how about letting things go? Not holding on to things, not holding on to the grudges. And again, that has to do with the living in the present and not focusing in on the past or the future. And then we get quiet in our bodies and our minds, but not silence. I'm not a monk in Tibet. I can't get silent. There's always gonna be thoughts, but you know what? Those thoughts are okay. And mindfulness says, just feel the thoughts, experience the thoughts and then say, okay, it's time to just float away. Now, there's another piece that we look at when people talk about mindfulness, they always assume that it has to do with meditation and or that they're the same thing. Mindfulness and meditation are two different things. Meditation, I can tend to see as the umbrella. It's bigger. There's probably hundreds of different forms of meditation and mindfulness is a form of meditation. It fits, it, it becomes um, a style, I guess, of, of meditation, if that's what you would like to do. My, meditation is bigger. It's just that whole practice of slowing down. When was the last time you slowed down? We were having discussion before we um, got ready to do the seminar, and Maribel had identified, you know, that was something that she had found that this experience of going through COVID-19 has caused her to slow down. And I think for most of us, we're saying the same things. I don't have a need to go everywhere to do everything. My life has changed. I may not be slowing down in my job, but my whole attitude is slowing down. And that's being very mindful of what's going on. And that is a part of meditation. And it's very relieving because it's very soothing and very um, stress reducing when we slow down. We also, again, just like mindfulness, we get quiet, but not silent. And a lot of times, uh, most meditation practices allow us to concentrate on something, whether we can't concentrate on a lit candle. Maybe we'll concentrate on, um, I have river stones that I use for a practice of meditation. It could also be just on your breath. It could be on movement. Tai Chi and Pilates um, have a component. Also, yoga has a component where you get quiet. You may, maybe that's the way they end the um, course that you're taking. And so that allows us to have a, a portion of meditation. And, but we also still focus on the present. We try to reduce our stress. We try to improve the quality of our lives through meditation. So how do we do this? How is it? So what we are going to do is we are going to practice. So what I would like you all to do is this. We're going to um, end with a, a slight mindfulness and more of like breath work which um, is, is focusing in on our breath. But I do want you to know that the next several slides are resources for you. Those will also be um, put up on the YouTube channel and I understand that they will also be sent to all of you. So Baptist Health and the department I'm in is called Community Health. We're offering 60 to 65 classes a week. So please feel free to um, go online. They're all free to the public. They're all on Zoom and feel free to go on to do whether it's exercise, whether it's meditation, whether it's presentations, we have wonderful information for you. And then there are also a resource list. I've offered some ideas of meditation apps and podcasts. So now what I would like you to do is this, I want you to just get quiet and sit back, relax, start with your eyes closed, and also on your body, make sure that nothing is crossed. So if you have crossed your legs, if you've crossed your arms, try to open them up. What that does is also opens up your soul, opens up your heart so that we can actually start the mindfulness practice. And now all I want you to do is this, to take a slow, deep breath in. Feel that warm air as it fills your whole body up. And then slowly, slowly let your breath out at your speed, the way it feels the most natural for you. 
and let your mind just drift away as you take another slow, deep breath in. Feel your whole body filling up with that warm air. Become aware of how that feels to be filled up with warmth. And then slowly let your breath out and become aware of your body. Feel any tension that you have as your breathing slows down and your mind drifts off to just focus on each breath you take in. And then slowly let your breath out. Do you have any tension? Do you feel any tightness? Is there any lumps and bumps that you're feeling uncomfortable with? So the next deep breath you take in, allow that warm air to go to that place in your body that's tight and feel the warmth cover that spot in your body or multiple spots in your body and let that warmth relax those muscles and slowly let your breath out, letting all that tension flow out of you. And if a thought comes in or a list into your mind, be aware of it, recognize it, for what it is, is just a thought. And then slowly let it drift away. Don't force it, just let it float free. With each breath you take in, feel that warm air filling you up. Each breath you let out, let all that tension flow out of you. Feel how your senses are more aware and alive. You can feel the warmth of the air. You can smell how fresh and clean the air is. You can feel the relaxation in the muscles of your body. Just let yourself go. Let yourself relax. Let yourself rest. And this feeling you will want to hold on to for as long as you can. But it is now time to return to the present. To be mindful that it is time to return to the here and now. So you slowly open your eyes. and be aware of how much more relaxed you feel. Thank you all for joining me. And I will now turn the program back over to Ruth. Thank you, Beth. That was amazing. I loved it. Um, I just can't thank enough our speakers today. Um, Everyone, you know, had valuable information for all of us to, to, to really take in, take a note in and do something with it, right? So I, I even for myself, I, I got a lot of tips and things that I can uh, add into my daily routines and I hope you do the same. Um, you know, this is really for you to take care of yourself and it is important. If you're happy, everybody else around you will be happy. So it is important to take that extra care of ourselves and, and look for different practices or, or techniques that, that they can maybe work for you. Uh, like everybody has said, everybody's different and everybody has different needs. So just, just pay attention to your needs and make sure that you do something about it to feel happy and relaxed um, during this time. So with that, uh, I am gonna just again, let you know uh, that we have an email, that we have um, you know, uh, social media channels that you can follow us and, and connect with us. Um, just to share with you guys, the next, we have a, a watch party coming up uh, on June 4, and we will be sharing in social media and mobilize 
uh, the, the how to register and how do you can be part of it. We're super excited because a follow up, we will have an exclusive uh, Q&A chat uh, with the CEO and the person that actually has been working on filming these, uh, you know, different topics of women in tech uh, challenges and things that have happened. But the topic that we're going to be watching next week is, is all about uh, how much women has progress uh, uh, in, in, you know, to have a presence in the industry and the power of community, which is pretty exciting. Um, so I'll be sharing more of that on, on the Chasing Grace project uh, within our mobilized and our social media channels. Follow us, this is our hashtags. If you like the session today, please, you know, uh, make a comment in, in social media, tag, tag, tag us along so people can be familiar with the things that we're working on and, and be prepared of it. That's the, the whole goal with, with this. So with that, I wanna close the session with, um, Oh, sorry. With that, with this quote, the key to wellness is to accept personal responsibility for your health and well-being. Take action. Uh, and that, uh, pass it to you, Katie, for Q and A. Awesome. Thank you, um, Ruth. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we we greatly appreciate you all on the panel taking time from your busy schedule to share all your expertise in these different areas. So. For questions, if you don't have any questions at this moment, I just sent out a chat again to see if anyone has any questions. Um, so we're actually kind of good on time too. We have two minutes left in the hour. I don't know if anyone on the panel wants to mention anything else. You guys can all turn on your cameras if you like. Yeah. And see your beautiful faces. Um, as we mentioned in the chat, we will um, save this presentation as a PDF. We will send it out to the mailing list. Um, we will also be posting the webinar on our YouTube channel, which will send a link out to that also. Um, so you'll have all the links and all the resources that the presenter shared with you today. Thank you, Suzette. Suzette's an excellent presentation. Um, but honestly, we don't have any questions. Um, unless someone no, I mean, no. you can raise your hand too. We can open your mic and you can, you know, uh, ask questions live as well. Not, not a problem. Um, but take advantage of other, the, you know, the speakers we have today because they, they, they can really give you uh, additional advice. Anything coming in? No. Well, I, just a comment for me. Uh, bed, the uh, practice uh, meditation made me more relaxed and I'm really happy that we went through that together. Um, so I hope it was helpful for everybody else. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, Katie, anything else or T? I do have one question. Hold on here. No questions. Okay, cool. I just, um, it says no questions. Great job on the presentations. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Uh, that was from Marcella Phillips. Thank you. Um, just a lot of thank yous out there. Yeah, and like Dave, like we have mentioned, anyone that has registered uh, up to today, we had about more than 60 people registered, right? So uh, we will be sending the slides of this presentation and the link of the YouTube uh, channel for the recording. So you can always access and, you know, if, if there's anything else that you want to, uh, you know, get the details of that particular topic, you have access to that, uh, to those resources. Um, yeah, and I, and I think that's it. Um, mention real quick I put in the chat uh, Ruth was mentioning the Chasing Grace I put a link to their site just so you can get an idea of what it's about but as Ruth mentioned we're going to send out uh, via email on our social media and I'll mobilize the full details because you will need to register to get the link to watch to join the watch party but just to give you an idea of what Chasing Grace is about I put a link in the chat that's awesome maybe do you have I don't know on hand the link for the registration form I don't know if there's oh. I can get that real quick. Yes. Um, I'm gonna put that in there too. Here we go. So I just added that to the chat. That's to register the Google Doc. Just go ahead and finish it out or Google Form. Um, and then from that information, we'll follow up with an email with the details to actually register for the screening. Yeah. So Marcela, Jessica, Maribel, Beth, thank you so much. Do you want to maybe have, you know, some closing uh, thoughts that you want to share before we end the session? I just wanted to say to everybody, just keep breathing. 
that I think um, a lot of times, you know, that is one thing that we tend to do when we're under stress or we're nervous, anxious, whatever, is we either hold our breath or we breathe too fast. So just focus on your breath for even four breaths can slow you down and make you feel so much more relaxed. So just keep breathing. And I see some of you already practicing gratitude and you're self-aware of that. So keep doing that as well um, and incorporating that into your breathing. And I think you'll be just fine. Yeah, I, I want to echo that. I, you know, as a person, I, that's something I do daily, uh, you know, think about the things that I'm grateful for. And I just do it in my head, you know, when I'm taking a shower or when I'm walking. And it just kind of puts everything in perspective for me. Uh, you know, why, why, why I'm here, what is my purpose and makes me really happy right away. Everything changed my mindset, right? So I think I, I completely echo the breathing and the um, great gratitude practice. Awesome. All right. Thank you all so much. Just get more physically active. You know you can benefit from that. <laughs> Thank you. The, yeah, the virtual 5K, we, we should pro, pro, you know, try to do it together, maybe like and create a group or something that we can do it. <laughs> right? it's, I think that that's a lot of people are doing it too. So I, I, even in my company, I see uh, groups of you know, people just running and changing their times. It's just a you know, fun thing to do. Great. Awesome. I think we're done, Ruth, right? We'll wrap it up. Yep. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Everyone have a good afternoon. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you.